And welcome to worship, online worship here with Calvary Lutheran in Morganton, North Carolina. It is the uh, uh, 20th uh, Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, I mention that because next Sunday we are going to be celebrating the Reformation. That means our pyramids are going to change from green to red. And I hope you all will wear red at home. I'm going to put on some red and it will remind us of the Holy Spirit's presence uh, and constantly reforming and transforming us into uh, the body of Christ every day. Uh, I, so next Sunday is Reformation. And then, but this Sunday, uh, one other thing that I need to share with you all is that we are celebrating uh, the, the lives of uh, Riley and Megan as they are going to be having their wedding in November. And so we have a wedding shower today virtually. You can find that link, uh, the Zoom link, on Facebook and in your emails from the church on Thursday. Uh, I think it's called a Thursday Happenings. So find that link and join us following worship at 11 o'clock. Uh, and we will be um, virtually opening gifts and, uh, and sharing congratulations and having lots of fun. Uh, that's all I have uh, for announcements. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the prelude. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace, and we go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. We is humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who cry out in need. And through His death and resurrection, Christ has made us His own. Hear the truth of that God proclaims, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, Raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. 
So I want you to take a minute and th close your eyes and think about the world. Maybe you have a globe in your house or a map that shows the whole world. And when you look at that map, or you can look at it online on a device or something, it's important to know that we always talk about how God created you and me and Pastor Paul and our friends at school and in church, but God created everyone and all animals and all people and all of nature. And he, and because he created it, that means that it's our job to take care of it because it is his gift to us. In today's story, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and he tells them that you give the emperor what is the emperor's and you give God what is God's. And hmm, what might that mean? Well, it kind of means that God gave the world and all of creation to us as a gift to take care of. So as you go about your week, think about how we can take care of our brothers and sisters, whether it's at school or in your family, and also how to take care of creation because it's our job to do that as children of God. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for the gift of creation. Be with us and guide us as we continue to learn how to care for this wonderful gift from you. Amen. The first lesson comes from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I shall call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make will and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim your salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. God's wonder among all peoples. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to the Lord. Bring all 
Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Acacia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth both from you not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming." The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So here we are in what is probably the most political time of any of our lives. Although there's no telling even how, how even more politically intense the next few weeks are going to get before the election, I highly doubt it's going to get any better. And here is our Gospel reading for today, where Jesus is yet again tasked by the Pharisees and Herodians 
with political traps upon political traps upon political traps. Unlike nowadays, people must have had no problem talking about politics and worship because they straight up asked Jesus a question about paying taxes right in the middle of the temple. And no one seems upset, up, up, upset by it at all. At least not from what we can read in Scripture. Even when Jesus asked them to take out a denarius in the middle of the temple, no one really seems to care. This is shekel territory, as one biblical professor puts it. Denarii, the coinage of the empire, has no business in the temple of Israel. If they were going to get upset over politics in the temple, this is what they should get upset over. But they don't. They try to trap Jesus in the game of politics, but Jesus sees what's coming and gives them something new. Something that they should have been prepared for, but were not. Because they are hypocrites and have lost their way. Jesus shows them the way. And shows them it has nothing to do with the partisan politics of the time. His answer exposes the idol they have made of their political motives and, the same and at the same time reveals the true purpose of our worship. To give ourselves completely to God. I seriously love how Jesus handles this extremely tricky political situation. At that time, most Israelites opposed the tax, while Rome and Rome's emperor required it. The question of taxes paid to Caesar will eventually provide the spark that causes the Jewish revolt just 30 some years later. This revolt marks the end of temple worship in Israel because the Romans are so upset that the Jewish people won't pay their taxes, they completely flatten the uh, building Jesus is currently in, the temple in Israel. The trap was clear. If Jesus sides with the majority who so greatly supports him, they were shouting Hosanna in the streets just a day or so ago, then it is definitely clear. He's an insurrectionist and must be put to death. Side with Rome, however, and Jesus would lose the crowds that support him. The majority would vanish as soon as they found out what he said there in that temple. And it would be quick, even without Facebook. But again, what Jesus says is they are not prepared for. These temple leaders, the Pharisees especially, but the Herodians as well, they did not think there was a way out of this trap. And so when Jesus shows his freedom and power over the situation by simply being true to who he is, they are amazed. They thought he could be only one of two extreme identities they themselves have come up with. An anti-empire zealot or a bootlicking supporter of Caesar like the Herodians. Both of which they knew could be easy to exploit. They were not ready for the Son of God. And so they were amazed and left him and his authority in the temple, unsure of what to do. Do you know what to do? When you hear Jesus share these words, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's, do you participate in his little object lesson? Can you see the image of God that is imprinted on you as you were knit together in your mother's womb? From the time of your baptism, when you were marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever, are you aware of just whose you are? This is not so easy to remember, especially right now. There are very loud voices going non-stop. 24-7, screaming at us to choose. And I have found that the louder they are, the more extreme the options become. It's not even simply between Democrat and Republican anymore. These voices have become so extreme, the labels socialist and capitalist are too tame for the loudest of them all. It's dumbfounding, really. I'm not even going to name the labels I hear screamed at me and everyone else, especially on social media. 
I'm not sure I have the stomach for it anymore. Because it is all a trap. Just like it was for Jesus 2,000 years ago. Do not let yourself be trapped into thinking you and all those around you are anything less than a children of God. In Christ, God has claimed you. You belong to God. Be honest in that truth. Remind yourself of it every day. And those who wish to entrap you will be amazed at the freedom and power you have in Christ Jesus. Perhaps you will be amazed too. There is, after all, a powerfully freeing sense of awe that can come when you say those words, Jesus, I am yours, save me. Chains fall off with those words. The, captive, the captives are set free with those words. The oppressor's rod, the red-faced screaming of extremism, all of it breaks with those words. Jesus, I am yours, save me. Our psalm for today is old, but it carries with it a message of new hope, new joy, and new life whenever it is proclaimed. Hear these first two verses again. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Whenever I am alone, distraught and worn down by all the screaming, I go to song. I go to music. And I rejoice in the power the Spirit holds over all that wishes to entrap me in this life. None of it, none of the labels, none of the lies can withstand the freeing power God wields over my life when Christ speaks to me in song and reminds me I am His. For me, it's as simple as singing these words, either out loud or silently in my heart. Jesus, I adore you. Lay my life down before you. How I love you. It's an old song. And there's a bit more to it than that. The reason why it comes to me so frequently, I think, is because of how it reminds me of whose I am and to whom exactly my life is laid down in front of. What happened? I'm getting a sign, two mixed signals, and I'm sorry for that distraction. But I'm reminded by that song, those lyrics, Jesus, I adore you, lay my life down before you, how I love you. Because my life is laid down in front of Christ, Christ who made me. And for some strange reason, despite how old that song is, how often I have sung it, the impact it makes for me in my life is made anew with every repetition. The year 2020, the year 2020 has been exhausting, overwhelming, unrelenting, even punishing. Now more than ever, the world needs to hear a new song to sing. The world needs to be made anew just like each of us. The world needs to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And when it comes to this message, when it comes to all the world crying out for salvation in the midst of every trap that has been sprung, remember we are all members of God's choir. Each and every one of us, instruments of God's love. And our voices will not be quiet any longer. They can't be. Our conductor, our director, our Savior and Lord Jesus is calling on us. He is keeping the beat with his baton, the cross on which he died. We know whose we are, and so now is not the time to be afraid. Now is the time for the truth, to be who we are made to be, 
to lift every voice and sing, to give God what to give to God what is God's. Amen. Please write. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant, Luke the Evangelist, whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, 
May the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Especially for Karen Clayton, Jim Fisher, the family and friends of Jan English, and all we name now, either out loud or silently in our hearts. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to pray as we are gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit and as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we will uh, share a story of generosity, this time from Megan Downey. So Calvary has been focusing on the word generosity. Generosity is when people are able and willing to give. This could mean financially and of themselves that benefits others before themselves. And I'd love to share with you all what generosity has looked like during these difficult times with youth families of this church. In case you weren't aware, youth group has still taken place since March. And most of the, of the time, we were on Zoom, but this fall we uh, started to regather in person in a safe way. As fall approached, I realized the, important, the importance for the youth to gather in person, and I knew we could make it happen because of our small, tight-knit group. But when I expressed my ideas of guidelines to the youth committee and youth families, everyone was on board. But even further than that, we had youth families offer up their homes and backyards and outdoor spaces to host the youth group. Being able to regather became just a bit easier and even more fun than I had imagined. I didn't have to think of cool outdoor places to go because these families have some awesome backyards. Youth group has happened outdoors and with masks and being able to visit each other's backyards just brought youth group together on a different level. We were able to see the importance of fellowship and community. I was able to witness firsthand the generosity that was pouring out. When talking to the parents about the week we would visit their house, I was constantly asked, what can I do? Is there anything you need? Guys, I was blown away. I thought, of course not. We are just so thankful for the space. I quickly realized, though, that there was a true, that there was true giving for the benefit of the youth. It wasn't about itemizing the gift or how much was given. It was about being able to make things happen for others. It was truly a God moment for me to experience this kind of generosity. And God was definitely present. Every other year, youth group happens in the fellowship here at Calvary. We would have events, maybe did an outing here or there, but most everything we did was here at church. Taking the youth group outside because of the generosity of youth families is proof 
that youth group could happen outside these brick walls. And it should. God is present in all places. Our gathering wouldn't have been the same without youth families coming together and support the youth group through this kind of generosity. It is proof that generosity can come in many forms, and in this case, it's through donation of time and space, and ultimately, it was for the benefit of others. Please rise, and let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you in the way of eternal life. Amen. Remember the poor. Thanks Thank be to God. God.